Hello there, and welcome to another Opium Pulses unboxing video. Today we have what I believe to be a pretty special video for Opium Pulses, um, because it's something that isn't 10 years old bought from a charity shop for once. Today we have um, an unboxing and a brief comparison with other um, standalone headsets. Today we have the Oculus Quest. Uh, it is a little bit late. Um, I did pre-order it, but um, thanks to Yodel, Shout out to Yodel there. Uh, they messed up my order. Uh, they messed up my delivery, in fact. So um, it's here now. That's all that matters. And uh, we're going to do an unboxing. I'm going to show you uh, the headset, the controllers, what comes in the box. Um, we're also going to compare briefly um, with some of the other standalone headsets out there. I'm not going to go too in-depth because I plan to do something a little bit more in detail in the future with other headsets. Um, but we're going to show you uh, what's what's available on the market as well as other headsets from uh, from Oculus themselves, and uh, we'll we'll show you what you get in this box. So I don't want to uh, talk so much that you already jumped to another video. One thing that we're not going to do today is uh, the software. I'm not going to show you any of that. There are plenty of other videos, great videos on YouTube that do show you that. And besides, the uh, software is going to evolve and grow over time quite rapidly. So we're just looking at hardware today. So if you're interested in that, uh, put your seatbelt on. Um, I don't drive too fast, but you never know about the other drivers. So this is the box for the Oculus Quest. I apologise for the angle. I don't have the greatest setup uh, for, for video here. Um, it was in the cellophane. I've taken that off because I started the video and then realised uh, on my S10 I have a widescreen support so I don't have to have too many zoomed in blurry images for you. So we're starting again. I don't have the film on this time. Um, but that's the most boring part, isn't it? So this is the, uh, the cover art. Pretty fancy. It's got kind of matte finish to it. At the top here... It essentially just reads out the things that are included in the box. I'm not sure if that could be read. Uh, it says the VR headset, two touch controllers, AA batteries, power adapter, eyeglass spacer, and a charging cable. This is the 128 uh, gig variant, which is the largest in size so far. Uh, considering there's no SD card support, it's pretty important to have the memory that you'll need. The other size is the 64 gig, and there is a $100 or, I believe, £100 uh, price difference in the uh, size variants. But this one's come from the States, and that's why I know for sure what the dollar price difference is. So, let's open her up. You've already been waiting 2 minutes 40, and you, we haven't even got in the box yet. And I hate videos like that, so I apologise. So let's get in. So, we take the sleeve off. One thing before we get in, because I think you'll appreciate this... Uh, is on the cellophane, one second, is a sticker here that came on the box that reads... Can you read that? No, come on camera, what is this? I've spent a lot of money on this. The product can expose you to chemicals including carbon black, which are known to the state of California to cause cancer. Cancer! and other birth defects or other reproductive harm. Apparently, California are the only people to establish this. So uh, in California, if you use VR, you're likely to get cancer, guys. Sorry about that. Anyway, I think um, I think pretty much everything gives me cancer. So if it's going to be a VR headset, so be it. Right, again, let's get in. So let's take the sleeve off. You've got the uh, very basic uh, Oculus logo here, which... Even though it's just a circle, or whatever you call this thin circle here, I really like it. I think it's pretty effective. So whenever I see it, I get a little excited, even though there's probably no reason to. Take the box off. And uh, let's see, right, let's get a bit of an angle. So here is the headset. You've got the controllers inside, and you've got a box, I'm assuming, containing uh, reading material, wires, whatever. I mean, it's supposed to be wireless, but the charging cable at least. Here's the headset itself. You can see the cameras. You've got one in each corner. Um, you've also got, I don't know whether this is a mic or an LED light up here. Uh, it doesn't have the Oculus logo, but it does have the name. Luckily, no Facebook uh, branding on it, which I really appreciate. I don't know how long that's going to stick for. I think you have the, uh, the power button here. You have the jack cable there. Underneath, you have the volume rocker. And you have what wasn't on the go. Um, it looks like um, a focus dial of sorts. I'm not quite sure how it works. Uh, then you've also got the USB-C charging port there. 
Um, that's strange. Looks like uh, two jackpots. Not, I'm not quite sure what that that's for. Um, these are actually the speakers either side. They don't look like traditional speakers, um, but you'll see if I move it up, there's a slot right there. That's where the audio comes from. Um, it's supposed to give you uh, a close to surround sound experience. Um, the strap is weird. It looks like almost like a basket that's supposed to, you know, cup uh, the back of your head. And it has a sort of um, soft plastic feel to it. Very different to the Go that was almost an elastic kind of material feel. Um, but that's the headset. Pretty heavy. Um, in comparison to the Go, actually, it feels a little bit lighter than the Go. Uh, a lot lighter, actually. But it does seem to use a less dense plastic. This is material, almost like a, the Google Daydream in its in its own way. Uh, moving on, uh, maybe maybe we'll do the comparisons of the headsets first, and I'll compare the controllers afterwards. So this is the Oculus Go. I've not done a video on this myself, but I will be doing more because I've been using this daily for the last maybe month. Uh, and before that, I used the uh, Gear for another month before then. So I've got quite a lot of experience with them. Power cable here, volume rocker, um, microphone. Uh, that's pretty much it. I, I, you've got um, micro USB here, not USB-C, and uh, the jack port there. Um, it's got the uh, Oculus logo here, and these straps are elasticated. Very comfortable. I find these straps very, very comfortable. The only thing I'm not too keen on is the sponge that they use. It just it warms up. It, after a while, it's almost abrasive on your skin. It's it's not that great. You've got the lenses here and the proximity center, sensor there uh, for it to tell you when you're um, when you're when you've actually got it on your head. Um, it's got the uh, lenses spacer in there. It's basically a plastic underlay, so it's not too far different from the Quest um, in terms of design. Um, I guess they took a lot of inspiration uh, when building this one because they, they pretty much got it right. Uh, the other design here, this is the uh, Samsung Gear VR that was made in partnership with Oculus, uses the Oculus Store. Um, these are the ones that require a Samsung Galaxy or Note phone to run. Um, they go inside there and the lenses reflect from the screen. Um, it's a nice design. I think they tried to go a little bit futuristic. Some people might not enjoy that. I personally think that Google did a great job with their um, with their Daydream, which I'll be reviewing in, in future and comparing it with other headsets. You've got the, uh, the focus dial here. You've got the touchpad, which is a great addition. No other headsets that I'm aware of have touchpads um, that you can control games with them. Uh, the home button, the back button. Um, you've also got the USB-C charging point vents here to stop fogging although i found this headset fogged a lot um and you've got the you've got the gear vr and the oculus branding here and also these these sponge parts here are very comfortable in, in terms of the headsets i've used this is the most comfortable against your face but the straps quite harsh and hard not that great when you've been wearing it for quite some time the lenses and the proximity center i'm sorry to, to go into these so much um you're here for the quest. I just wanted you to see comparatively how it looked in terms of other standalone and mobile headsets on the market. Um, the Oculus Go is two hundred dollars cheaper. The Gear VR is three hundred dollars cheaper. So it's kind of like they're stepping stones in terms of their prices. Um, but the Quest is the most premium Oculus standalone headset currently on the market. So let's go to the controllers next. He we have uh, six degrees of freedom controllers. Uh, so the sensors track these wherever they are in your digital space. Um, and the headset also tracks where it is in your space. You have to basically draw the map of where you are in your room. You can have a fairly small room, one meter by one meter. So you're basically just standing and doing slight movements with your head. Um, but the other headsets, as, as you may know, didn't have any sort of tracking at all besides the controllers that got introduced a lot later and obviously where your head was looking. Um, so... These are held like this. You've got your trigger button. You've got a grip button, which uses basically the knuckle part of your hand. So when you grip, it feels it. Um, it's got uh, an analog stick here, which nearly, very nearly didn't come to the Quest. You've got the Y and the X buttons here. I believe that's menu or home. And these are the, uh, I don't know what they call them, but I'm going to call them sensor blades. 
Um, you've also got a horrible feeling strap here that feels like dry seaweed. Um, and I believe to put... I, I want to show you how to put a battery in there, but I don't want to be here all day. So, oh, there you go. So I believe you slot just a double A into there. Um, and, and, and from previous experience with other controllers, the batteries last a long time. Um, so you get you get a pretty good uh, pretty good life longevity out of them. Um, the other controller are exactly the same. The only difference is they do say right and left on there. Um, so quickly, these feel great. But let's compare them to the other uh, controllers. These are obviously, as far as I know, in terms of Oculus at least, they're the first six degrees of freedom controllers, which essentially means they track forwards, backwards, up, down, uh, rocking left and right, left and right, tilting backwards and forwards, and th there might even be another motion that it tracks. But it tracks everything, so it tracks your precise um, destination in in your area. Um, but the the ones for the Oculus Go and the Gear VR and also for the Daydream, which we'll again show you in future videos, use controllers such as these. These are three degrees of freedom. They go back, left, up, down, tilt, right, uh, up and down. They don't um, they don't go forwards and backwards. And uh, they, there's a few other um, motions that they don't track. They again, this uses two triple A's. This is uses one double A. Similar battery life, two triggers. The Daydream doesn't have a trigger. That's its biggest letdown. Uh, touchpads, which is nice. I, I mean, really, these things don't have touchpads. They have the um, the analog stick. These were nice just to, you know, to, I guess, have precise movement with without having to press physical buttons. Volume rocker here for the gear. Um, home and back or the other way around. Here again, no volume uh, rocker, but it is on the headset. The new Gear VRs didn't have volume rockers on the headset, so it's just, it depends where the volume rocker is. You've got your back and your menu. So again, th these are both great controllers. I really like them um, for what they are. When it comes to the Daydream, the controller, um, it's let down. It does the same job. Um, one upgrade is that it's uh, you can charge it. Uh, it has its own battery pack. Um, but besides that, no trigger button makes a lot of difference because when you want to point or grab, you've got nothing. It's it's just a stick with buttons on top. Um, anyway, let's move on. Here we've got a box of good A's. So as I said earlier, I've bought I bought this from the states, which unfortunately means I get an American plug. But I I do have oh that's a shame. So I thought that was just going to be standard USB, but it's not. So if you're buying this from another country to try and save money like I did. Be aware you're going to get a plug with no standard USB in here, although there might be wires to accommodate that. We'll check in a second. Um, so you're going to have to use this and maybe use an adapter to plug it in at the end there. Um, I'll have to look into that myself. This is the glasses spacer. This essentially just gives you more room in the headset for you to wear glasses. I wear glasses. A lot of people think, what's the point when it's right up close to you? It does make a difference, a massive difference. The Go, for instance... No focus wheel. I can't wear it without glasses. My eyes still think they're looking in the distance, so they're blurry. The Gear VR, better without glasses because it has that, you know, it has that dial. Um, but still, I can't get it perfect. I've tried. So it is essential for some people, such as myself. I am short-sighted, um, so I can see things close up, and it still is blurry for me. These, these, uh, these, these spaces make quite a bit of difference. Um, then we have a huge wire. I'm assuming... Sorry, my curiosity is making this video boring. Okay, so I'm still going to have to, you know, I'm, st I'm still going to have to put this into an adapter because that goes in there, that's fine. But I don't have a UK plug that has a USB-C adapter in it. They usually go straight to standard USB. Um, so that's unfortunate, but um, you can't argue with like a $100 difference. So there's your wire. It's actually quite long. I'm, I'm kind of impressed. Um, but I've just noticed it's USB-C to USB-C. Um, I'm not sure how I feel about that, uh, which means that the, the extended cables that I've bought are practically useless. I'm going to have to get this. I'm going to have to get an adapter that sends this to normal USB. Um, that's annoying. Uh, then, oh! So I just flew the batteries across. You get standard uh, alkaline batteries. I don't even think they're branded. Um, no. Uh, what have we got here? A thick manual. I'm assuming that's like three or four different languages there. There were my batteries. 
Um, so there's your manual. Obviously not going to show you that. Uh, and then you've got here a reference guide. I don't know if there's anything interesting in there, but I'm, sh I'm sure it's just simple setup. Um, how to draw your room, how to get your controllers set up, the, you know, the mobile app and, and stuff like that. So there you have it. There's, there's nothing else in this box um, of anything to note. Um, I'll show you the headset one last time. You've got your four cameras uh, that allows it to know where it is in your space. Um, oh, I didn't take this off, did I? So there's your lenses. I'll take the stickers off at some point. What we're going to do at some point in another video is we're going to compare the Google Daydream, the Oculus Go, the Gear VR, Samsung Gear VR, the Oculus Quest. I mean, I know it's it's obviously going to be a winner, but people have different, you know, these, these headsets aren't all aimed at one type of person. And then we're also going to compare a couple of standard um, uh, generic headsets that use things like Google Cardboard. So that's going to be our, our, our next video. We're going to compare them all in, in much greater detail and go over their pros and cons. But for now, um, I, I hope this has been helpful to some of you and, uh, and, and if not, entertaining. And if it's not entertaining, uh, I guess I'll say something entertaining. Balls. That's entertaining, isn't it? It's a fun word to say. It's, I'm going to leave it there. Cheers, guys. Bye.